The development and growth of teeth is a complex process of interactions between the primitive oral epithelium and the underlying ectomesenchymal cells. The epithelium is derived from the ectoderm of the first pharyngeal arch, while the cells of the ectomesenchyme are a neural crest in origin. Since the neural crest cells are primarily derived from the ectoderm and eventually give rise to the mesenchymal tissues, they are called ectomesenchymal cells. Tooth development, though a continuous process, can be divided into three stages called the bud, cap and bell stages. These stages are so named because of the shape the enamel organ assumes in each stage. So in the bell stage, the enamel organ continues to grow and assumes a bell shape. So before we get into the details of the events happening in the bell stage, Let's have a look at the different types of cells constituting the whole tooth germ at this stage. Like the cap stage, the early bell stage comprises of an inner enamel epithelium lining the concavity of the bell and an outer enamel epithelium lining the periphery of the enamel organ. There are capillary plexuses established near the outer enamel epithelium which bring in nutrition for the cells of the enamel organ. The inner enamel epithelial cells differentiate in the stage to become tall columnar ameloblasts. Some cells between the inner enamel epithelium and the stellate reticulum become spindle shaped and form a layer called the stratum intermedium. Now these cells are speculated to work in tandem with the inner enamel epithelium to form the enamel. The rim of the enamel organ at the cervical region where the inner enamel epithelium meets the outer enamel epithelium is called the cervical loop. The cervical loop is an important part of the tooth germ in that it gives rise to the root sheath which proliferates to form the root. The cells below the concavity are called the dental papilla and those surrounding the enamel organ and the dental papilla constitute the dental follicle. The dental papilla cells near the inner enamel epithelium differentiate under their influence to become odontoblasts. Now the bell stage is marked by two events called the morphodifferentiation and histodifferentiation, both happening simultaneously. Morphodifferentiation refers to the establishment of the shape of the crown and histodifferentiation refers to the coming of age moment when the dental papilla cells differentiate to become odontoblasts and the inner enamel epithelial cells become ameloblasts. Odontoblasts form dentine and ameloblasts form the enamel. Another important event happening at the bell stage is the fragmentation of the dental lamina. The dental lamina disintegrates, separating the tooth germ from the oral epithelium. These fragments of dental lamina degenerate. However, they may sometimes persist to give rise to supernumerary teeth, odontogenic cysts and also odontogenic tumors. It was initially thought that the ectomesenchyme exerted pressure on the inner enamel epithelium giving it the bell shape, thereby determining the shape of the crown. However, that is not the case. Just like the cap stage, the enamel organ assumes a bell shape because of the differential growth of cells. So let's try to understand how this happens and remember that morphodifferentiation and histodifferentiation happen simultaneously. The inner enamel epithelium in the early bell stage secrete growth factors and signaling molecules which help in differentiation of dental papilla cells to become odontoblasts. Simultaneously, the inner enamel epithelial cells corresponding to the future cusp tip position begin to differentiate into ameloblasts. Once the inner enamel epithelial cells differentiate, they stop proliferating. However, the adjacent inner enamel epithelial cells that have not differentiated continue to divide, exerting a pressure. Also, the inner enamel epithelium is constrained and restricted by the cervical loop. So, the pressure exerted by the dividing cells and the confinement of these cells by the cervical loop results in these cells buckling and assuming the shape of the cusp of the corresponding tooth being formed. The inner enamel epithelium and the dental papilla continue to differentiate from the cusp tip down the slopes of the cusp to the cervical region. Hence, the deposition of dentine and enamel begins at the cusp tip and ends cervically. 
The advanced build stage is marked by the formation and mineralization of enamel and dentine. When enamel and dentine form incrementally, the stellate reticulum collapses. Finally, the ameloblasts and the outer enamel epithelium fuse with each other, forming the reduced enamel epithelium surrounding the entire crown. So once the crown is formed, the rim of the enamel organ at the cervical region where the inner enamel epithelium meets the outer enamel epithelium is called the cervical loop. This cervical loop starts to proliferate and gives rise to Hertwig's epithelial root sheath. At the beginning, the root sheath bends at an angle of 45 degrees towards the pulp, constricting or narrowing the wide cervical opening of the crown. This is called the epithelial diaphragm and would eventually become the apical foramen. The epithelial diaphragm remains constant and the free end of the diaphragm does not grow. What rather happens is that the root sheath continues to grow coronal to the diaphragm. So as the root sheath proliferates, the inner layer of the root sheath induces the differentiation of the adjacent dental papilla cells to odontoblasts. And these odontoblasts begin to form dentine. As dentine is formed and is mineralizing, the adjacent root sheath cells start to disintegrate. Now it has to be understood that the root sheath is never continuous as it keeps disintegrating as it grows. Most of the disintegrated cells move away from the root surface and the cells from the dental follicle interact with the dentine. On interaction, the cells from the dental follicle differentiate to form the cementoblasts and lay down cementum. However, some of the disintegrated cells of the root sheath do not migrate and may persist in the root area, and these cells form the epithelial rests of Molasse. As for multi-rooted teeth, root sheath proliferation takes place in the same manner as single-rooted teeth. However, the diaphragm develops tongue-like extensions, two or three in number, depending on the tooth being formed. These extensions fuse with each other, dividing the apical foramen opening into two or three openings.